All right. Um, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us for the Southwest Coda's online marketing series. Uh, my name is Hannah Bertong, and I am one of the members of the La Plata County Task Force um, that is here to bring you this video series. Uh, for those that don't know, the La Plata County Task Force is a group of um, small business leaders from Southwest Colorado who have been partnering together during the, the current health crisis to help businesses react, respond, and recover. Um, so we, our, our vision with these marketing classes was to create um, tasks that you can do every day during the stay-at-home order um, to sharpen your brand's marketing skills and to optimize your online presence. So this is our third week, I think. I've lost track, but um, you can join us every Monday through Friday morning from 9 to 10 to tune in. Um, we have a great lineup, um, and I will go ahead and introduce today's speaker. Um, his name is Nick Kogos. Um, he is the marketing manager over at Visit Durango. Um, he's taught two courses already for us and has done an a great job. He is such a good teacher. So you guys are in for a treat today. Um, so he's going to introduce um, display campaigns and how to use Google ads. So with that, let's get started. All right. Thanks, Hannah. Uh, appreciate it. So um, today's class, um, like Hannah said, is going to be focused on Google ads, uh, specifically display campaigns. That being said, um, just looking through the, uh, the survey that was sent out early on about everyone's skills regarding Google ads, it seems like it's a pretty new topic to a lot of people. And so I decided to kind of pivot how the class was written and organized um, to be like, basically the first half is, is a good introduction to what Google ads in the world of PBC is like. And then the latter half of the presentation is going to be getting into a combination of how to set up a, a like your profile um, and then how to like what display ads do, how they look like and how to set them up and launch them. So this presentation, I will say is um, it's pretty in depth. I, I'm trying to it's I mean, it's really it's a quick introduction to a huge, huge topic. But um, I'm trying to make it as, as simple as possible to go through. And um, this class, feel free. I know that we've kind of held questions off um, until afterwards. Um, but if anyone has any questions as I'm going through this, feel free to jump in the chat and ask them right away, um, just so you're clear on everything before we move on to the next thing. Because I have a feeling that things are going to like stack up and you might get confused if you don't have something like explained thoroughly. Um, if you have questions. So yeah, feel free to jump in that chat whenever you want. Uh, okay, so kind of diving in, um, for those of you who are not familiar with me as a person, uh, I'm the new marketing manager for Visit Durango. Um, related to this class, I'm a certified Google partner, which means basically I get a fancy title and I get invites to like Google events and just swag from Google. Uh, I have four uh, certificates through Google, um, one in display, um, or there's three in Google ads and one in Google analytics display search and shopping, which I'll cover the differences between the three of those in a little bit. Uh, this is a previous search, uh, paid search director at an agency and I've been doing PPC in some form, uh, over the last six years, either managing, um, accounts, uh, upwards of $250,000 a year, excuse me, <laughs> a year, um, or delegating that workout and overseeing the management of that. So. Uh, yeah, if anyone has any questions uh, after the presentation, this uh, will be available afterwards, uh, the whole slide deck. Um, and if you need anything else, want to pitch me an idea, feel free to reach out directly. Okay, so just kind of diving into the topics we're going to cover today. Um, and I, like I said earlier, it's going to be somewhat packed, but I'm going to try to like, I try to make this all as simple as possible with a lot of illust or a lot of graphics uh, and screenshots. But um, so we're going to go through the first section is uh, just a brief overview of PPC, the world of PPC um, and Google ads. Next is what display ads are, how do they work exactly? And then sections three and four are going to be that dive in of a step by step of both how to set up a Google ads account. And then number four, how to build campaigns within Google ads, how to design Google, how to design display ads. How to, and then how to put everything together and launch your campaigns. 
Uh, and then section number five are going to be kind of a quick introduction to what success looks like, what metrics you should measure, and uh, what you should be doing on a monthly basis with uh, maintaining your campaigns. All right, so buckle up. It's going to be fun right here. So um, this is going to be, like I said, that foundation of what Google ads and what display ads are. So you could take all these lessons and then kind of build on them uh, as, we're, as we're going through this. So, um, okay, just kind of getting started with the basics of PPC. Uh, so PPC um, is also known as pay-per-click advertising. And like it says right there, it's just this method of digital advertising in which a business will pay for a click whenever someone clicks on an ad and then goes to their website. So once they go to your website, they're free to do and do what they want. Um, either that's, uh, you know, uh, either that's continuing down your sales cycle with contacting you via phone, email, actually purchasing from you. Um, however you, however you sell and trade and sell goods on your website or through your website. Um, a, a more simple way to put, to put it PP at, or PPC, are digital ads that when you click on them, your business gets charged a small fee. And surprisingly, you all are probably familiar with the world of PPC. Um, the ads live in many places. Uh, most likely you've seen them um, in these three spaces, either a Google search on YouTube, the ads that you see during a video, before a video, um, and then on other websites, which I'm calling the general web space. And uh, what you see on other websites are the actual display ads. And um, you'll see lots of examples of that later on. Uh, what you're looking at on the right-hand side are what are called Google search ads. So you can tell just by the ad that is the little, um, the little black ad um, text that's right next to it. And, you know, you've probably in your time clicked, seen these ads and clicked on them to go through specific websites, whether you've known it or not. So, um, the ads are extremely effective at driving people to your website. Um, so I'm not discounting the success of this at all. It's a very, very good tool to use of driving people to your site to do what you want them to do. So the biggest, the biggest program that is used for running um, PPC ads is by far Google ads. Um, it's, I mean, I, I don't know what the market share of what they do is. It's, it's huge. Um, so big in fact that some of the other PPC platforms that are out there, like Bing ads, ad roll, advertiser, rev content, those are done after the fact, like almost on top of Google ads. In most cases, the, as your business starts to get, starts to scale and gets on a, like on a national level, you might want to start looking at these PP, these other PPC platforms, but like in general, if you're a small business located in Durango and you're selling your goods and services really in a localized area um, and you're either a brick and mortar or online, Google ads is going to be perfect for you. There's really no reason to go at least initially and use any of those other PPC platforms. Okay. So diving into the different types of PPC ads. So um, the biggest one by far is going to be those search ads, um, which are also called search campaigns. And uh, like you, like I was kind of explaining, you've seen them um, on dur just during a Google search, whether you're searching lawyers in Chicago, for example, or shoes in Durango, you've probably seen these ads pop up near the top of the search for whatever that you're looking for. And how you can tell that they're a PPC ad run through Google ads is again, seeing this little ad next to the, uh, next to this, this, uh, listing right here. So, um, I'm not going to get into the specifics of like how to start this or anything like that. Um, if you do have questions about that or want to know, or have an additional class, uh, feel free to reach out uh, in the chat and say, Hey, I want more information about search ads. So the one that we're going to be covering in depth today are going to be display ads. And so you've, like I've said, you've seen these throughout the general web space. Um, sorry, I'm looking at my notes here. Uh, you've seen them through the general web space. And, um, and what that means is that these ads run through Google ads are placed with, uh, with, uh, on other websites, not put on your own website on other websites. So that's a big, big differentiator. I want to, I want to say here, 
Um, so this is an example of a display ad that's run directly on the HuffPost by Microsoft. So they have uploaded these ads to either Google Ads or one of those other platforms, and they've either selected the HuffPost in order to advertise on or that Google has figured it out on its own and has served this ad on this website. So um, th those are display ads. So you've probably seen many examples of these. Uh, this is just one website for, uh, that has three different types of display ads on them. So it had actually, uh, yeah, there's three out here. So there's another one of these banner ads like this. There's this small little, what I would call maybe a mobile display ad up here that's a little bit smaller that is takes up probably more of the screen on mobile and then you have what's called an in article or just like a responsive ad right here um, so within a particular website you can uh, you can have your ads running as as much as your budget allows and as much as that website has the inventory to do it so websites only have certain like only have a certain inventory to serve these ads. And so once that inventory is kind of full, think of the big sites like CNN, MSNBC, um, you're not gonna be able to get your ads running on those sites without a heavy budget to like kind of like cut through everyone else. Um, that's because of the inventory that they have there. So, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll I'll, I'll get into that later on. So the next type uh, that you've probably seen and we all love and love to skip that little skip ad button, um, are video ads. These are also run through Google ads. Um, and then you've seen them mostly on Google ads. They are, they are um, on other sites as well, like Vimeo is another one. And um, something that's kind of interesting is that Google is starting to, well, has been doing this for, for a while, but they've started or they've had, uh, you have the ability to run um, your display ads on YouTube not actually in the video itself. That's a whole, that's, those are, that's video ads done through Google ads, but this is a display ad run through a display campaign and it just happens to show up on YouTube. So you can, you can do both ads and both types of ads actually on YouTube, both YouTube or video ads and display ads, which is kind of cool. Okay. And the last big one are shopping ads. And so I myself just bought something recently off of a shopping ad. These are super, super effective. Um, they're, they're kind of run in multiple places. You've pr potentially seen the ads running on the top. If you've searched for something, um, you've seen like I've searched for Hydro Flask Tumblr, for example, and um, maybe it either runs on this top right here with little these little pictures here, or it runs on this sidebar right here. Um, and what's also kind of cool is Hydroflask is running search ads, you can see right here, and shopping ads. So again, you can run multiple types of campaigns at a time. You're not restricted to like, oh, I only can do display. No, you can do as many types of campaigns as you want, which is kind of cool. Okay, so getting into the specifics of what display ads are and how do they work. So um, I just wanted to, oops, sorry. Mess up my notes here. Um, I just want to. There we go. Uh, okay. Uh, I just want to circle back and say that um, and show you guys again, just so we're all on the same page. That these are what display ads look like and and how they are placed within a particular website. So, with that being said, there's lots of different types of display ads, and you can put them on really any website that you have the ability to. Now, I, I say that with, with an asterisk above it because of what I mentioned before about the inventory. And yes, you theoretically can advertise on CNN, but it's going to cost more than advertising on, you know, cattoys.com or something like that. Uh, so these are the different, these are examples of different types of, uh, worth uh, close-ups of what the ad graphic design, like the, what we call creative looks like. Um, so again, this is a banner ad right here. Uh, this is that like in feed or square ad. And this is what I would probably consider to be what's called a skyscraper ad or something that's tall, taller than it is wide. And so um, the features that are included within Google or display ads are you get 10 plus ad sizes available. And, um, and what, what I always recommend is creating all the different types. Uh, the second thing is that you have a huge reach in, reach in website placement. I've seen campaigns that have reached 
3.3 million people um, with a budget of what under 2,000 or under 3,000 dollars a day. Um, so there's a huge potential of reaching tons and tons of people. At the same time, you have huge targeting options. So if you want to reach the whole world, you can. If you want to reach just just Colorado or just 10 miles in Durango or a city block, and go, you have that ability to. If you want to target just people who are, you know, 18 to 24, let's say that you're you're um, uh, you're uh, kind of like an up and coming kind of cool retail store, you might want to target 18 to 24. All of those targeting options are available at your fingertips. It doesn't um, it doesn't cost anything extra, and it's it's as simple as a click of a button. Um, and it's not a feature per se, but I will say that display ads are the easiest type of PPC ad to create and run without a doubt. <clears throat> okay, so diving really into the targeting and placement options, I wanted to expand on this a little bit. And um, I'm not going to beat that top part, um, the top bullet with a, um, what's the expression? I'm not going to beat a dead horse with that top bullet there. Um, the other types of targeting that are available, like I said, you can do age targeting um, of, you know, they're done in blocks of 18 to 24, 24 to 35, 35. I, I have to remember what they are. Um, there is gender targeting, so you can do male or female or both. Um, location targeting, like I said, you can do international down to, you know, a, a city block. Um, users interest, which is really kind of cool. So you can target people who are interested in luxury cars, for example, or luxury watches, or um, they're interested in home decor. So you can really, like, tailor your ads based on... Um, or you can tailor where those ads are going to be seen uh, based on like wh who your customers look and feel like, and you can you can run ads to those specific people. Um, the user search history. So if they've been searching for recently home decor, for example, you can target those people. Uh, users that have visited your website. So um, if someone has gone to your website and has gone to specific pages that you have deemed are essential you can target to those people and you can do it as, as, as a whole, users that have visited my website and to show them ads to your business afterwards. Or if you wanted to show ads for someone visits the men's shoes page of my website, you can literally show those people ads again. And that's where what's awesome about that. And I know this is kind of creepy and we all like don't like those ads that follow us around, but research shows that those ads which are called remarketing ads because you're marketing to them again, are so effective at putting people back on your website and having them kind of go through your sales funnel. And um, so each one of those different places of uh, the groups of people who have gone to different pages on your website, you can target those individually or do like something as your website visitors as a whole. Um, a new a new ish feature um, is that you can upload it, an email list to Google ads and serve ads just to those people who are on your email list. And I'm just scratching the surface with what the targeting options are available. Um, there's plenty more besides these, but these are kind of the big, the big ones um, that you kind of want to get familiar with. And like I said before, all of this power is available right as your finger takes it, Tim, finger, fingertips. Doesn't cost anything extra. You don't need like a special license or a certificate like what I have. You just kind of dive in and do it. It's really that simple. Okay, so kind of to help understand the overall process of how Google Ads works with you and how the display ads are created and then launched through Google Ads, I created this very, very simple workflow um, of how things work here. So number one, you design the ads. So I'll get into that in a, in a second here, but you'll, de you'll design the ads. And then you'll also, that next one, number step number two, is you're going to create these campaigns within Google Ads. From there, you press the go button, and then Google analyzes everything. It digests everything. Okay, they have these ads. These are the websites that they're thinking about running them. This is the demographic that they want. It digests all that information. And then, oh, I have analyzed your campaign details twice. I just noticed the mistake there. So my bad about that typo. Um, and then based on all of those settings and targeting options and everything, Google is going to place those ads 
on specific websites based on your campaign settings. After the fact, Google is going to give you um, a data like a, and it, it's run every single day. Uh, it's going to give you reporting back on the performance of the ads, how many clicks that you got, how many impressions, um, what your click through rate is, et cetera, et cetera. You'll get that. Um, it, it comes out every day. You can analyze it on a daily basis. You can pull back and look at six months, a year, five years, a month. It gives you all different options of how you look at that data that's sent in from Google. It's really, it's really kind of cool. Okay, so I get asked a lot of times, but why? Why should I use the display ads? You know, these ads, they're kind of annoying. They follow you around a little bit. And, you know, why should I use it? Why should I invest the money in this? Well, for several reasons, and this is kind of tied in with COVID, um, they're cheaper than traditional ads. Um, I've seen, I've targeted personally as many people as a billboard can target with a fraction of the cost. I've run ads, like I've said, that have targeted 3.3 million people. That's how many people have kind of seen the ads for under $2,000 a month. It's crazy. And on the flip side, I've seen people, I've seen campaigns where you're reaching 3,000 people for just $50 a month. So it's, it has this, what we call scalability. So you can, you can target as few people as you want or as many people as you want. The sky's the limit. I mean, really, if you wanted to target and have every single person who has internet access on planet Earth, obviously there's going to be a lot of money behind that, but you theoretically can do it. But if you wanted to, you know, put the, draw a box around, you know, Main Street, in downtown Durango and hit people who are on their phones, who are 35 to 44, who like sports cars, you can do it. It's really that simple. Uh, so yeah, that gets into the highly, 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 highly targeted. And a great way, um, display ads are also a great way to promote your business what we call top of mind um, because your ads are just showing across the web. Um, you can hit people who are interested in your products or services and whether they're familiar with your business, business or not, but the ads that you're going to be showing them time and time again are going to make your business top of mind for whenever they need, assuming that they haven't gone to your website already and then have purchased from you. Um, when they think of Ben's Shoes and Durango, they've seen your ads six times and they know that you are the player of Men's Shoes within Durango and they're going to go to you first over someone who hasn't seen ads before. Okay. Excuse me. I'm like, my allergies are getting really bad here. Um, okay. So the next two sections are setting up your Google ads account and then building out display campaigns. And um, like I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, um, I, it seemed like there was a lot of people who are unfamiliar with Google ads and display ads. So I kind of pivoted the whole, the whole presentation and um, I'm not going to go through these slides in detail just for time's sake. Um, but um, you can go, this slide deck is available afterwards and it gives you a step-by-step -step direction of how to set up your Google ads account and how to launch display ads. So um, really it's the, it's, it's such an easy platform to use. I cannot stress that enough. Um, the big thing when you're setting up your account is you have to use a Gmail account. You cannot use any type of other email. It has to be a Gmail account. Google wants you to play, but with their products. And so they make you use a Gmail account to do it. Okay. So, um, oh, and I should mention that setting up a, uh, an account within Google ads takes five minutes. It's so easy to do. It's, it's just as easy, if not easier to set up than or actually I would say that Google My Business is easier, but it's, it's very, very easy to do that. Okay, so building your display ads and launching them, um, something I wanna, I wanna kind of pull back on a little bit is um, a lot of people get scared because they have to create these ads. And I'll tell you about our secret weapon, our market, the marketer's secret weapon is Canva. We've mentioned it in previous uh, presentations before, but this is a, um, this is a free tool that you can use to create display ads. You can be a graphic designer without having really any graphic design experience. Uh, you can see on the right here that I've typed in large rectangular ad, and these are the these are kind of the square ads that you see on Google ads or in display ads. And they these are templates that you can use where you could put in, drag, put your logo in there, put a picture, you know, change the text around and just export it, import it in Google Ads, it's that simple. And all of this is free, which is absolutely amazing. So 
Um, utilize Canva. Um, so I would sign up for an account today and kind of play around with it a little, little bit. Um, so once your ads are, have physically been created, um, then you're going to actually plug them into, or actually, let me back up here. So um, this is, uh, this is a step-by-step -step, um, of how to, like, which, uh, how, like, once you get into Canva, um, I've got a linked guide there of what sizes you should use. Um, there's what bad ads look like, um, but two different designs, and then you're going to create different size variations of each. Um, and if you have any questions um, on this and you're stuck, there's a great YouTube video that I've linked right there of how to create display ads through uh, Canva. Okay, so you've got your ads created. Now it's time to plug them into Google Ads. And um, same thing as before, uh, I'm going to kind of breeze through this because uh, just for time, but um, Again, it's going to take you, you know, five minutes to get this all, this whole thing rolling here. Um, just, you know, go through these, these directions here and then, yeah, you're, you're good to go. Um, and then once you're, um, you know, once you kind of start off the, and uh, initially like say what campaign you want to build, you're going to go through um, all of this section right here, which is just like the settings of the display. So like what locations you want to use, if you want to target males or females, et cetera, et cetera. And you'll just go down the list here. And then from at the very, very bottom of this, we'll give you an opportunity to upload your ads. And it's just like anything else that you've uploaded uh, via, e via email or, you know, a different website. It's a little button, upload ads, and then you'll find the ads on your computer. There you go. Ads are, ads are in there. And then you hit the launch button and you are good to go. Um, some pro tips. Um, when you're getting everything sorted through here, what I would recommend is having this, um, once you go through that and, and fill out that, um, this, um, this block right here of all the information, what, what targeting, et cetera, um, I would go through this pro tips and have it on your screen and just look through some of these things because these are really good tips um, on how to um, take your campaigns to the next level right from the start. Um, so the next question I always get asked is, what's an appropriate budget? And this question is really hard to answer. Um, the, my next question, my, my question that I always combat people with after they ask me this is, how much are you willing to spend? And what that means is, um, well, here, I'll, I'll give some recommendations. So I've done a little, little bit of research, not much, and I've analyzed like what Google has told me about what the Durango market looks like, as well as Colorado. And these are kind of just some rough estimates that I came up with of what to um, of what your budget should be for Google uh, for display ads. Um, so if you do one to two Durango based campaigns, I recommend a budget of at least three hundred dollars. As you add in campaigns, you're going to up your budget, obviously. So for each additional campaign, add at least fifty bucks a month for the campaign. And if you're adding additional cities, like you want to do Cortez or um, Salida. I don't know, some other cities that are out there, I would add an additional $25 per month per city. If you're wanting to target Colorado and you're doing one to two campaigns, unfortunately, it's going to cost a lot more because um, you're just, you're competing against more people and, and big dogs at that point. You're competing against Bank of Colorado, for example. And so your budget just has to be higher. Um, for Colorado-based campaigns, I recommend at least $600 a month. And then you can see the cost for additional campaigns in additional states. Um, one thing I really, really want to stress is there's a lot of factors that go into this. Um, and these are very, very rough numbers that I came up with. Um, something else uh, to, that I want to drive home is that regardless of the budget that you have, that you've put out there, Google ads as a whole is scalable. So as things start to, as, as things start to be, become successful, you want to throw more money at it because that's only going to bring you more success. And so I always like to say, be prepared to always increase your budget, not decrease your budget. Um, I know that scares a lot of people, but more success, as you're, as you're seeing success, put more, put more money behind it and you're going to see more success. It's really that simple. Okay. So if you do have specific questions about budget recommendations. Um, I'm going to give a little, uh, throw the marketing agencies uh, in Durango a bone. Um, feel free to consult with a, a Durango-based marketing agency, and they can kind of help you go a deeper dive into 
what they would recommend as far as a budget based on where you want to send your ads to. Okay, so how do I determine success? Um, I get asked that a lot as well. And so um, that gets tied into what metrics that you start to measure. In addition to that, I wanna cover what monthly maintenance looks like, what you should be doing each month to make your ads run the best that they can. So some of the metrics to measure right off the bat, uh, these are kind of the big three that you can start out with. There are many more metrics to look at uh, besides these three. Um, impressions are the number of times ads are seen by a person. So if I'm a person and I've seen your ad 10 times, that's 10 impressions, not one impression because I'm one person. Seeing the ads 10 times, give me 10 impressions. Clicks are pretty straightforward. That's how many times someone has clicked on your ad to go to your website. Um, cost per thousand impressions, which is known as CPM, um, mil for, or impressions is mil, um, which is the M. Um, that's how, that's what the total cost is for 1000 impressions. So um, it's pretty straightforward there. Cost per click is how much one of those clicks cost. And depending on the settings of when you set up that initial campaign in Google ads, you can either choose one or the other. And there's benefits to one versus the other. And that's, that's a conversation that I could potentially have with someone offline. Um, and, you know, another question that I get asked is, you know, what's a good number of impressions? What's a good number of clicks? And just like the budget recommendations, I can't really give you an answer to that because, you know, a campaign that has $100,000 behind it a month is going to have way more impressions and way more clicks than a campaign that has $100 a month. So it's really tied in with your budget. Um, that being said, there's kind of a good workaround in that um, where looking at that cost per thousand impressions, the CPM. So before you need to ask yourself, you know, how much, I'm, how much am I willing to spend to have my ads be seen a thousand times? Is it $20? Is it $10? Is it $5? You know, that's kind of up to you and what your, what the products and services that you sell are. Um, if you sell, um, you know, if you're a lawyer, for example, and your average service is $3,000, $4,000. Yeah, I would, you having $200 to, to have, um, to see, have your ad seen a thousand times might be worth it. If you're a tea company that's selling $5 bags of tea, I probably would not, I, I would try to spend as little as possible um, because you just don't have the margin. You don't have the advertising spend to um, pay anything else than that. So um, let's say that, um, you know, let's say that uh, in this example, or the $10. So let's say that you're willing to spend $10 to have your ad seen a thousand times. If you're looking at the data and I'm sorry, that's um, yeah, $10 for a thousand views. Let's say that you're looking at the data and you've noticed thousand impressions has cost $3. You're on the right track. You've got $7 left over. Take that $7, put it into a new campaign. Um, if you notice that you're at your impressions for uh, you know, a thousand impressions has cost you $20 and you're, only one, and you're only willing to spend 10. Okay, so let's, you know, something's not right a little bit. Let's do a little bit of research. Let's reach out to some marketing agencies and ask some questions a little bit. Um, but that's a good way besides like the number of impressions and the number of clicks that you can kind of like determine what success looks like. I hope that wasn't too confusing for everyone. Um, so uh, the biggest point I want to drive home today by far is that display ads will not result in lots and lots of phone calls and sales. It just doesn't work like that. Um, display ads are meant to, you know, they're shown all throughout websites on YouTube and that sort of thing. They're just another touch point. So they're what you would, they're in addition to what um, you're doing um, on top, like what else you're doing um, marketing wise. So like I said before, they're that brand awareness tool. They're meant to just like shotgun approach your business out there and hopefully kind of something sticks but that's in addition to everything else that you're doing marketing wise, like Facebook, flyers outside your business, you know, all, all that stuff. Oop. Sorry, getting all lost here. Okay, so um, monthly maintenance. Um, you know, what does what does what should you do on a monthly basis? And 
there's kind of this this um assumption with display ads that it's a set it and forget it once you launch the ads you just forget about it um and that's not necessarily true you're gonna end up you're gonna end up spending a lot more money than you would if you're going in every month and kind of doing a little bit, a bit of maintenance on that and so what that looks like on a monthly basis is review that report you know look at it from a week 30 days you know, whatever and then kind of figure out like, okay like the type of ad that's you know green works the best or you know this audience of 18 to 24 works the best this location works the best and then you can kind of take all that data and um, actually i'll get to that in a second um from there uh make sure that you're creating and publishing new ads and so take some of those success those things that you've learned like okay the green ads work the best or the blue ads work the best best then create more green ads or create more blue ads it's really that simple um and then from there try to narrow down the targeting the best that you can so if you're noticing that 55 plus really isn't doing anything take that out cross them out because you're going to be potentially wasting money with the 55 plus or if you're noticing that um you know silverton is not really driving any any clicks or impressions take them out and all that money will be redirected to the other cities um so over time you're going to take all of those little wins that you're finding out all that data all the little things that you're pulling out of that and you're going to move all of that into its own campaign and what i call an alpha and a beta campaign so stay with me here um so that alpha campaign is the best of the best if you if you see that you know males at this age looking at these ads and this location and they like sports cars like that's your that's the golden ticket those are the ads that perform the best you're going to create a campaign just with that and that's called an alpha campaign like best of the best then you're going to create a beta campaign which is something that you're experimenting with so maybe you want to try maybe you've noticed that blue ads are, are rocking and rolling and you're like well i haven't done red ads before let me see how the red ads performed or hey i haven't you know i haven't targeted people who are interested in i don't know luxury watches we'll just say that then create a beta campaign and see if you know see if that's working and then take those lessons again and either create a new alpha campaign uh, or put those into the Apple campaign. So I hope I didn't lose anyone right there. That's a uh, that's like Google Ads 2.0 there. That's a, just kind of a pro tip. Okay. And if you again throwing the marketing agency as a bone here, if you have any questions about um, maintenance or anything like that, um, and you want some help, feel free to contact a Durango marketing agency, and they can help you through some things. And with that, I'm really going to open up the floor for questions or comments, and we can really dive into the details if you want. You know, uh, don't be scared to ask any question you want. I'm, I'm here to really help you guys out with all this. I know it's a big and scary branded topic for a lot of people. So, yeah, be in-depth as you want with these questions. So, and with that, I'll kick it back to Hannah. Hey, Nick. That was awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah. We do have one question. Um, I do primarily online sales and I'm not a very small business and I am a very small business since I'm not targeting Durango or Colorado. Is this just far too expensive a strategy for me? Is there some way to best guess what to spend, <clears throat> excuse me, to be successful without targeting geographically? Sure. So, um, there, there's, yeah, there, you're right. They're, um, doing what's called a nationwide campaign is just, it's gonna to be too expensive, plain and simple. Um, can I ask, uh, can you put in the chat what kind, what type of business that you are, what industry you're in, or what your type of business is? You can just say like retail or, you know, food service, something like that. A woodworker. Woodworkers, okay. Um, so you might at that point Come uh, run against what I call the big dogs in the industry. I don't know if like Anderson, Anderson Wood. I don't know. There, there's probably some very big players in that. Um, like I don't know if IKEA might even be one. Anyways, um, with a nationwide campaign, yeah, you are going to run in, into. It's going to take a huge, huge budget to do it. Um, kind of a workaround that I've done that's been really successful with running what I like a semi nationwide campaign. Um, 
is go in your Google Analytics if you do have a profile, and then go into the the um, under um, audience. I think it's audience. Um, or is it behavior? I always forget. Um, like click through the little reports on the left hand side. I think it's under audiences um, and find the geo report and then um, look at um, it'll give you like it'll give you multiple options like country region state city um, click on the states little bar and then you'll see all the different states that people have gone to your website from and then what I would do is look at the states like there's the little columns um, you'll click on the um, the column that says um, um, like sessions and then look at um, time on site, which is um, or session duration, those two columns. And then just like, just kind of like look at and see like, oh, okay, California is really good. Colorado, not so much. Massachusetts, really good. And then pick three or four states that are like the kind of the top performing states in, on your website and run Google ads to those states. Um, and if you can't do four, if you can't do eight, do two, and then just kind of see what happens. Awesome. Um, and then if you remember, if you guys need any follow-up assistance and want to talk to Nick specifically, um, you can email him. His email is right there on the screen, um, and I'm sure he'll follow up with you. Yeah. Um, Okay, another question. What percentage of overall budget would you recommend for the marketing budget? For your entire marketing budget? Um, can you just put in the chat your entire marketing budget? Let's see if... Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I have a little... Uh, can you put what industry that you're in? in the wine industry. Wine industry, okay. Um, give me one second here. Um, I've actually done some research on this um, <laughs> because I do get asked that quite a bit. Um, stand by. <clears throat> Sorry. Budget, 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 budget. All right. Ah, there it is. Okay. Um, so you are in so um okay, um food and beverage and retail is uh ten percent. So um you're that's the average percent of revenue you should spend on marketing is 10%, at least 10%. Do you have a spreadsheet with suggestions that maybe we could send out to people, Nick? Of, um, of kind of what you just did, like a percentage of overall budget? If um, not, that's, no worries. I, it's proprietary. I can't, unfortunately. Okay, um, no worries. But I can, if people just want to ask me in this in this chat, I can just tell you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, feel free, the people that are in here, just ask in the chat and I'll just go through. Cool. All right, another question. Is it possible to place display ads on specific web websites? Yes. If so, <laughs> how can you tell if these specific websites accept display ads? So um, yes, the answer is you can place ad display ads on specific websites. And that's, that's a really good, um, after what I would recommend first is starting wide. Um, you can pick what types of websites to um, run your ads to. So um, if you're a river company, for example, um, you can show ads just on like tourism based, travel based, adventure types of, uh, of sites. So I would probably start there. Um, and then you can see what, and, and actually in addition, you can, if you know of particular websites that you might want to advertise and place your ads on, you can just insert them and it'll just do like, it's just like a search bar within, um, the, uh, within the platform itself within, within Google ads. 
and you can just if you if you search it, it'll pop up if it does accept um, display ads. Okay. Cool. Hope that answered um, question. Great question. How do you find your target audience for the ads? Do you have suggestions on how to do this? Sure. So um, honestly, I would just kind of think about who your average customer is, um, what we call target personas. Um, it usually is more than one, you know, kind of four. It, it might be less than four might be a good place. Um, and I would just think about like, if you're a retail store, who's walking in, what do they look like uh, all day? Um, are they, you know, a Democrat, Republican? Are they, you know, how much money do you think that they have? Those types of things. And you can be kind of stereotypical, which I know sounds bad. Um, but based on, I would write notes of like, you know, person one, he's, he's been the, I don't know, been the businessman or whatever. Um, ben is 25 or sorry, 35 years old. He makes this much money. He's interested in this, 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 um, and kind of build out like a little fake Facebook profile for him, but just on a sheet of paper. Um, and then I would take all of that and then plug all of that within Google into Google ads with those targeting options. Um, another way, if you don't know who your tar or if you don't know, or if you want to like, confirm your suspicions or your, um, your stereotyping. Um, if you have a Google ads profile, um, you can go into the demographics report and look at age, gender. You can't look at income that was taken out. Um, you can, but then you can look at their interests. Um, they're called affinity, affinity interests where it'll be like travel enthusiasts or luxury shoppers or, you know, uh, value shoppers or something like that. Um, and so, yeah, if you're an online business and you don't know who your target person, who your average customer is, I would go the Google analytics route. If you're a brick and mortar, I would just kind of think about your average customer. And then I would potentially confirm that uh, in Google analytics. Awesome. Um, should I just make one ad or should I make multiple ads to display? I would do as many ads as possible. Um, there's the 10 plus different sizes. Um, and there's something I haven't even really, uh, I really haven't even talked about, which are called responsive ads. Um, just everyone make a note. Um, and now actually I'll put a little like, like introduction to responsive ads in the, uh, uh, in the chat. Responsive. Um, all right, here, I'll put this in the chat. Where's the chat here? There it is. Um, yeah, here's a couple of good resources. Um, and also here's a, um, here's a general guide um, from HubSpot about um, just that you can do a little bit, uh, you can learn a little bit more about, um, about um, um, responsive ads. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, uh, create is create all of them because you never know which ones are going to do the best. Um, there's like, as a whole, Google has data on like, which I think there are like, there's five that perform the best out of all of them. But I've seen it happen where we create all of the sizes and the five best that you statistically think are going to be from Google's eyes are going to be performing the best and they don't. That's the other ones that do the best. So, and you're not going to know that unless you create all the ads and put them in there. And then um, how do you know which size ads to create? Do certain websites only accept certain size ads? Good question. Um, so Google makes this so amazing that or it's amazing that they don't like they, they, you can create all the sizes and it will figure out on its own and place the ads on a website based on what sizes they accept. So you don't have to do anything on your end uh, with being like, well, the CNN, what size ads do CNN, does CNN take? Nope. Google figures it out. 
And that's, that's actually another argument for creating all the different ad sizes because CNN might only take skyscraper ads, those ads that go vertically. They might not take square ads or the banner ads. So, but you won't kind of know that unless you create all the ads and then you look at CNN's like report in, in the reporting and you're like, oh, like they only, you know, only they're only accepting the skyscraper sizes. Um, but you just, again, create all the ad sizes and then you're, you pretty much cover your bases there. Um, for the ad sizes, I put in, um, let me, let me go back to the, uh, the slide here. I put in this guide of just for time's sake, I didn't want to really get into the nitty gritty of it. Um, give me one second here. Um, actually, hold on. Go ads. Uh, yeah, so here's here's this this first one is a is what I was talking about where it says um, like it'll tell you like what the most popular ad sizes are, uh, which ones are the best performing, best performing, um, and then um, this is I thought I put this in here. Um, this bottom link that which comes from Google will show you um, the specific dimensions for, um, for all of the ads. Um, yeah. And then um, something, um, something I should have mentioned um, is that in, uh, here, I'm gonna send another thing here. Uh, something uh, in, uh, in Google ads, um, or sorry, in Canva, um, let me go back to that slide, um, stand by. Uh, yeah, so in Canva, um, there are, you can do custom sizes. So what I would do is, um, you know, like search large rectangular ad, and it'll tell you the size of this once you click in it. Um, this is probably like 350 by 350. And then if you, once you do some research, or that's, sorry, that's probably 250 by 250. Um, if you're if you're pulling up this this like size guy that I provided here, and you've noticed that hey they don't have this three three six by two eighty these are the pixel sizes. What you can do in Canva is you can just create a, a custom size and um, just type in three thirty six by two eighty. And then um, what I would do to save some time too is I would have multiple like tabs open of Canva and I would have the one blank 336 by 280 ad open up and then I would have a previous ad or like maybe this large rectangular ad like you find a template that you like and then you can actually like select that whole that whole template like all the little boxes and everything and you can copy and paste that and put that into your custom ad and obviously you have to like reshape some things but like that's a really quick way to like apply a design that you really like to an, uh, to a custom size ad that there might not be a template for. So I hope that made sense. And then one last question, mm -hmm. does Google decide where to place my ads? Yes. Yeah. Um, it, assuming that you don't tell it, tell Google ads where to place it. Um, you can, like I was saying before, if you just want to place an ad on MSNBC um, or um, cattoys.com, you can. I wouldn't recommend going that route because you're going to just severely limit the amount of people that see the ads, um, especially if you're, if you're targeting Durango, for example. You kind of have to think, okay, well, how many people go to toys.com like a person a month two people a month it's just not going to be a good bang for your buck so start wide and let google kind of figure some things out um if you don't want for example if you if you have if you do if your men's shoes maybe you don't want to place your your shoes on travel sites um 
you can exclude those types of sites. Um, and th these are these are things just like once you get in there, you'll you'll see they're called it's called placement. Um, and you can tell Google Ads, I don't want my ads because I'm a men's shoe company. I don't want those ads being placed on a travel site. But I would start either like either broad and don't do any and don't do any placement restrictions starting out. Or if you're really concerned about some ads and being shown on different types of websites, I would exclude those. But, um, and then as you're starting to find success, then you can drill down and narrow it. And maybe you're noticing that, hey, cattoys.com is just kicking butt. Then, I, then you create that alpha campaign, which I was talking about, where you're creating ads only that go to that cattoys.com site. That being said, you would create another campaign, that beta campaign, where you have more of those sites available, and then you just kind of find out what works from there. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Um, unless we have any other questions, I think that's it. Um, so yeah. if you do have any follow-up questions, feel free to email um, Nick. We can, Nick, do you mind putting your email address back up there? Yeah, Or absolutely. I can put it in the the chat, but um, feel free to reach out to Nick with specific ad questions. Um, tomorrow, we will be tuning back in um, 9 a.m. Um, to do the second part of our SEO training. Um, so we hope that we will see you guys tomorrow. Um, and, uh, wait... Sorry, oh, go uh, ahead. Yeah, Hannah, I was gonna say, can you leave the, uh, can you leave this presentation just kind of on for a couple of minutes? I wanna make sure everyone's gonna get those links that I put into the chat. Yeah, um, absolutely. Once this once this uh this ends, then they lose all that. They lose the chat. Perfect. Yeah. Well, I'll just leave this up for a minute, um, and then we'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Thanks guys. Hannah. Thanks, everyone.